If you guys are looking for the cheapest coins on the internet right now, make sure to check out my brand new sponsor, MMO EXP. They have the cheapest coins that you can find anywhere in the internet. Use code Poodle at checkout for 5% off your order. What's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another Madden Ultimate Team video guide. Today, I'm going to go over the top 10 base legends for Madden 21. Now, guys, these are going to be the most exciting ones, the ones that I'm looking most forward to. Guys, this year, as you know, every time we had a legend drop, everyone's always crossing their fingers for a certain legend that we want to see nice and early. Now, I, based on this year and based on the last few years, I've compiled my list of the top 10 that I like to see real early in Madden that really just make a difference. Now, guys, the guy's number one, one of my favorite all-time base legends that I've ever seen in the beginning of a Madden. But if you don't remember, you've been watching this channel long enough, and not just my channel, multiple other people have endorsed this legend. But you will see, as we get into this, what I'm talking about with some of these legends here now. Finding them in here is going to be a little bit tough because there's a lot of uh, influx of legends here. So we're going to have to slowly do this and go one by one. But guys, before we get into today's video, we start going over the top. For always, guys, for the card art and the thumbnail of today's video, shout out to the director. Again, another Madden YouTuber. Awesome content. Great editor. Great director, as per his name. And guys, he does awesome card art and, like, thumbnail type cards. You, know, you guys know what I'm trying to say. I don't know the exact word for it right now. Like, uh, like edits. Let's just call it edits. He does great edits for next year's Madden. Trying to make sure, you know, try to show us what the cards could look like, but they're very realistic. That's why I've been using the cards, but go check out his channel. Give him a sub. Check out everything. Hit him up on Twitter. I will leave the link down below in the description, but that's about it. 10 legends that I'm expecting from Madden 21. Make sure you go down below. Hit that subscribe button. Turn that on your boys. Come to the family. Make sure you give this video a big thumbs up as always. And if you haven't already, let me know down below what you think of my list and who would you add. Now, coming in at number 10 on the list for my base legends is going to be Jerry Rice. Now, why is he number 10? And why he's not higher on the list? Now that's very simple. When he first comes out, he's pretty good. But guys, I'm the kind of guy that never actually got Jerry Rice this year. Ever once, didn't use him. Jerry Rice is never the most athletic on the field. So it always good. It's like if you already have your athletic receiver and you'd only usually him, do you really need that second guy? It all depends on your passing tree and the way you like to throw the ball. But Jerry Rice is one of the best receivers when he comes out because he's, he's a well-rounded route runner, he's a well-rounded catcher, well-rounded athleticism, and he's pretty decent height-wise. So he's always very good to pick up, but for me, I never see the need for it, but, and he doesn't last too long, that's the other issue with Jerry Rice, but when he does come out, the first two weeks, or three weeks that he's out, he's a very dominant wide receiver, but the issue is like, prior to this year, before I did Madden YouTube, I was like, I'm always pretty much no money spent, so I can never afford the new Rice, and by the time I can, he's not that great anymore, now the next year is a different story, I'm picking up everyone as they come out, so, Jerry Rice for next year, gonna be super dominant, it's not gonna last too long, because he gets very phased out speed-wise very soon, but for the time he is, that's why he's number 10, because he does have to make the list, because of course he always is one of the best legends that we do get. But of course, not my favorite, which is why I have him there. Although I'm a big fan of Jerry Rice in real life, but we don't always get that kind of card. Next year, Shannon Sharp. I hope we get a Shannon Sharp earlier than we did this year, because Shannon Sharp is always one of those tight ends that are super glitchy, especially early on. Early on, he's going to have good speed, great catching, and good route running. That's everything you can ask for with decent enough run blocking. Now the issue is when we got him, I believe we already been exposed to like an either, I don't know if it was Evan Ingram or if we were exposed to a wall or we were exposed to something nice and early that kind of already beat that for us. But this Sharp, we get him nice and early, even like an 83 speed if it's a little bit lower than that, 83 speed, but he's going to have great catching and good route running. That's going to be game breaking at the beginning of the year, especially when linebackers are super slow at that point and people just don't have that level of speed. And Sharp's always just been fun. Now this year, again, cards usage all depends on their drop rate. So what cards were, were, were used more when you compare Khalil Mack versus like a Von Miller. In the early beginning of the year, Von Miller was used way more than Khalil Mack. It's not because he's better or more popular, but quite simply, the way Madden functioned this year, we always had a better Von Miller. We had a better Von Miller for quite a while until the end. So it never made sense to really go ahead and grab him. You guys understand what I'm saying? So that was kind of always the issue with Von Miller. And now that's it's the whole thing with cards. Like, is Shannon Sharp better than Kittle? Maybe, but Kittle had the better card. So it's just it's always about timing in these games now here we got ray lewis this isn't the base legend because he did not get low enough base legend for me to really compare that but this is 93 close enough now obviously i gotta bring the stats down a base legend ray lewis would be super fun first off because it's before all the great user linebackers are out that you replace him with so you have to get a lot of fun out of him he'll be great at stopping the run and he'll be super dominant and he'll be forcing a lot of fumbles early on on a lot of run games which is what we need now a base ray lewis doesn't start with an 87 speed i imagine he starts with like an 83 speed maybe an 84 max probably still has 90 hit power so i'm thinking 90 hit power probably 90 tackle probably like 88 play rec close to 85 to 86 strength but his speed's probably like an 83 84 which is fine he will be great at stopping the run and even a decent user at that point in the year i think ray lewis car will be super fun as a base legend we have gotten him as a base legend before it's just this time around 
that's probably the best card to compare it to. Next on the list, guys, is one of the most dominant quarterbacks for quite a while. Now, he would have been higher on my list, but there's a reason why he is a low at number seven as he is, and specifically because of the reasoning that next year we're going to get a free base lead Lamar Jackson power-up. So last year, the reason Steve Young was so great was because he was the only quarterback who can get escape artists in Dash and Deadeye. This year, we might be able to get in, or even just escape artists, we might be able to get an escape artist guy early. Steve Young's always that first decent runner with a low speed that we always get, we always get hyped for him. But with Lamar Jackson coming day one for us, we might not be so hyped about Steve Young. But this Steve Young was dominant for a while. He had, he was one of the best passers, if not the best passer. Combined with the skate artist, Dash and Deadeye, a good arm and good, just literally chemmed up and powered up. This card ended up hitting like almost every threshold. It was insane for the or that early stage of Madden. Steve Young's always kind of like that though. He is a lefty, which throws some people off. But guys, I recommend if Steve Young comes out nice and early next year and you don't have Lamar or you want like a Dash and Deadeye type of quarterback, an improviser, that's your man. That's all I got to say. Next on the list is a guy that I'm always hyped for. That's Larry Allen. The first Larry Allen release always gets me hyped. Guys, I know you guys might think it's exciting, but nothing's better than that dominant guard. I'm telling you guys, I love an, I love a dominant interior line. So yeah, if, if my if my tackles aren't great, yeah, that's bad. But something about having bad guards in center just really bugs me. Well, my interior lines, I hate not being able to run up the middle. I hate not being able to get some interior push. No, no push up front. I hate that. I hate losing the trenches. So Larry Allen at the beginning of the year is just super dominant. He's a great run blocker, great pass blocker. And he just gets a big clog right in the middle, takes up space, and lets no one through. That's kind of what I need. But that's number six. Tell me number five was a guy that was super, super dominant early Madden this year. If you guys know who I'm talking about right here, Ken Houston was super fun to play with. I hope we get another Ken Houston card. He was the definition of that hybrid safety in the beginning of the year. Because in the beginning of the year, not everyone's stats are great. You want to pick out one or two things that are great. He was able to be the fastest guy on the field while have being one of the tallest guys in the field, being one of the hardest hitters in the field while also having zone and almost cracking the man. But if you put lock down on him, he did crack the man threshold for 80. Guys, powered up and chemmed up, he did get to a 90 zone. So he had his zone threshold. He was able to get pretty much everything he could want up to an 89 speed powered up. This Ken Houston was so dominant early in the year. He was a great user safety, a great box safety, and even a great cover safety. Ken Houston was awesome. That's why he's number five. Now we get, we get over to number four. A guy that doesn't typically, as of lately, get a base legend. He just doesn't. He doesn't get base legends anymore. I, I don't know why they really don't do that. Like they, I mean, they like to use him for like, you know, pretty much like clickbaitish, you know, put him in a Mutt 10 promo, make sure we buy some packs. But this was, I believe, was that our first Dion? I, I, I mean, I could be entirely wrong, but I feel like we, our first Dion was that Mutt 10 one, right? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Anyways, let's go through it anyways. So uh, basically, Dion doesn't have these stats, of course. Uh, basically, Dion probably ends up at, in my opinion, probably 90 overall. And he's probably gonna have a 90 speed, which at that point's insane. Plus powered up and everything, probably gonna get like to 91 anyways. Now, what's gonna really change in a base lead Dion is that his coverage will probably be like an, it'll probably be, I, in my, I think 90, 90. It'll be man 90, zone 90 regardless. And then all that they would do is probably his agility and his speed and everything down to like 91 or like a 90. And then his play record would be slightly down. His press would just be a lot worse. They'd probably be his press like a 68 or 70 at that point. But I still think a base lead Dion gets all the thresholds that you're gonna want from him while being insanely athletic and that's the beauty of Dion. early in the year Dion's a fiend because later in the year once everyone's so athletic Dion gets a pick he's not outrunning the whole squad at that point in the year Dion or ken you some of those guys get a pick they're off to the races it is so great to have a guy like that at that point in the year. i'm telling you guys no nothing's better than Dion early in the year certain guys just really break the game at that point next guy is a guy that sometimes again we struggle to get a, we struggle to get a card for for a while luckily last year we did get a base we got a base legend for him but it took a little bit of time. It wasn't like the first day, but it did come pretty quickly. So can't complain too much this year. But Lawrence Taylor, guys, again, just like Dion, early in the year, really just dominates. He'll probably get the exact same card again. 90 base elite legend. Pretty much just expect that at this point. 84 speed, 87 excel. At that point, it's unheard of for an outside linebacker rushing, considering that's faster than some of the running backs and wide receivers in the field. Combine that with his 87 finesse, 89 power move, and 85 block shed. Powered up and chemmed up, he did end up having like a 92 power move, which was so dominant at that time, especially because not many people really want to spend coins on linemen at that point. I'm telling you guys, Lawrence Taylor, number three right there. Now, number two, this is just a guy that I would love to see early. We never get him early. Sometimes we struggle just to see a card of him, and that's sean taylor guys now i can't the issue with sean taylor is we only really got that 95 and the ultimate so let's, let's kind of use like one of these right here to show you of course that's a speed card that's gonna be an issue all right to give you guys a reference it's gonna be kind of tough but a basically sean taylor 
probably ends up around a base legend sorry probably ends up around in my opinion 89 speed which is fair 88 to 89 speed which is fair as a ken houston type probably has a 90 hit power and an 85 zone i think that's so fair 90 speed 90 hit power 85 zone and he's like six foot c six foot two right so I think, in my opinion, that is the best way to get a Sean Taylor nice and early. He'll be a great user. And guys, at that point in the year, again, carrying's not that great. So just overall, the amount of fumbles you can force with the Sean Taylor at that point is just going to be unreal, especially depending on how they alter abilities and stuff like Enforcer. And guys, this last one right here is one of the most dominant legends I've ever played with to start a Madden year. And that's going to be Marcus Allen. I've been really lucky. There's been like one of each on each one, and I'm surprised it's still there. Marcus Allen was the most dominant force and you can ask you can ask a lot of people ask Xerxes specifically we've made so many jokes about this he is the most dominant running back I've ever used star Madden. when this came out we're like oh yeah well you know you might you always gotta pick up that first base legend right like okay we'll pick him up whatever we picked him up we found out about abilities right because abilities just come out so we put him we put him on like oh he gets uh he gets evasive so okay let's put a vase on him. put a vase on him put some inside zone guru on him, whatever I throw on him threw a few abilities on guys evasive evasive's good right but this is like pre patch this is like when evasive was like it's all prime not to mention, we were in a stage of Madden where week one people really don't have to play too well yet. All the players in the field defensively were like 82 and 83 speed. This man's like an 87 powered up and sprinter ended up having like an 89, 90 speed. And to make it even, to make it all better, he was like power back too. Guys, he used to be able to run up the middle, get to the first safety. It would be like, you just do click, click of your analog stick off. He would do like a juke seven yards to the left and he'd be gone. This card, I, I placed top 100 the first week of Madden. Just because this card, I just ran all game. Didn't pass once. I know it's ridiculous that it's not like, you know, it's not fun for a lot of people, but Marcus Allen was so glitchy. I really hope we get another one of him. This card was another level. Now, again, he phased off in within about a month, but he lasted quite like a month for a card is sometimes really long in these ultimate team type game modes. But guys, about it for the video. To recap, we got Jerry Rice, Shen Sharp, Ray Lewis, Steve Young, Larry Allen, Ken Houston, Deion Sanders, Lawrence Taylor, Sean Taylor, and finally, the GOAT, Mark Sound. But guys, that's about it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you're new to the channel, make sure you're on below. Hit that subscribe button. Turn that on, about boys. Come join the family. Make sure you give the video a big thumbs up, as always. And if you haven't already, comment down below. Let me know who you would have added to the list. But guys, I'm out. Peace.